Oh my god. So, I know I joke around a lot, but that title is legit. I made this. I mean, this is just me screwing around just to test it out, because I've never ran a CNC or a mill or anything like that. Ran a drill press before, obviously a lathe, but this is amazing. I, I cannot thank you guys enough for all the support. I might cry. All welcome back to the shop, guys. The shop that has a mill, a CNC, still have a lathe. Now I got a drill press. Ah, oh, man, this is this is a dream come true. I cannot thank you guys enough for all the support. Even the haters with their hating, they don't realize it, but they're just sprinkling on that AdSense money. A uh, big thank you to Google, YouTube, AdSense, all that. You know, this is this is really amazing, and. Don't think that I've been just blowing that money on strippers and blow. It's it's going to good use. I got all this this equipment that I never thought I would have. I mean, look, this shop is not even finished, and it's it's crazy all this stuff I got in here. I know it's a small shop, but uh, I, I'm using my space really well. You're probably thinking, how the hell's he got a CNC and all that stuff in here? Well, again, don't think that I'm going to forget the little people or anything like that or... I'm going to be driving off my Ferrari and, you know, this, I saved my pennies for this. And in all honesty, I got a really good deal on it, but, oh man, I'm so excited. Without further ado, check this out. There it is, guys. Oh my God. I, uh, I might get emotional. Uh, I know what you're thinking. That is crazy impressive. And that must've been so much money. Yeah. They're not kidding when they say CNCs and mills and drill presses and all that stuff are expensive. They're, that's not a lie. That's the stuff is super expensive, and I saved where I could. Uh, I'm gonna tell you straight up, I got everything here for under twenty five bucks. I know that's a lot of money, but that's. I thought you know happy meals for the whole family, or have the ability to make any part that I want, and I'm like. I got the wet shot side I need to make parts for. I don't want to have to outsource this stuff or try to explain to somebody how this insane, ridiculous idea in my head, I need to have it made out of aluminum. Uh, they laugh. They're like, what the hell is wrong with you? And that's kind of a hassle. So I'm like, screw it. Happy meals are delicious, but I want the ability to machine anything I want to machine. And now I have that. Isn't that amazing? What, what do you mean you don't get it? What don't you get about it? That's a drill press vise. It's a bracket. Some hardware. The hardware's mismatch, I know, but I, technically I got that for free. Uh, that's why I, you know, I had to save where I could. So, what do you mean you don't understand? Well, let's here, let's go to the lathe. What does a lathe do? A lathe, basically what you're doing is you're putting the piece that you want to machine into your jaws and it spins. Spinny, spinny, spinny. Then you take your your cutter, your tool, and you move your tool as the part is spinning. And you machine it that way, right? Your All this stuff that I can't remember names for because I'm self-taught. Uh, your carriage and your saddle and all that stuff and your cross slide. That's for this for cutting angles. All that stuff is super accurate. It's perfectly leveled north, south, east, west. And that's how you have everything come out perfect. That's why you can't do stuff. You can't make parts if you don't have a lathe, certain parts. Huh? So now you get it, right? What, did you take the short bus? No, it's super easy to understand. I mean, once I thought of this in my head, I'm like, well, why doesn't everybody do this? Uh, so now what does a mill do? A mill, basically, you would have the cutter, the bit, the end mill, that would spin really fast and then you move your part huh okay so we'll go here same with the drill press that's why this is a drill press vise say you're going to machine this you put this in your little drill press vise right and this is what we want to mill now a drill press this just sits still your drill comes down and you know you cut a hole in it that's what a drill press does right a mill this moves 
you have a, a bit, an end mill. Let me grab one. End mill is like a carbide drill bit that's flat, or they have ball mills. But anyway, you have this spinning, and then you move your piece. So you say your bit's down here, and you move it this way, it cuts it flat. And then all this stuff, all your table and everything is is super accurate and it doesn't move, it doesn't budge, and that's how you can make parts with a mill that you can't make on a lathe until you have this stuff. What do you mean that's genius? Well, I don't I don't think it's genius. I just I just think of this stuff. I can't help it. You oh you want to see it in action? So check it out. Now we have our the cross slide that normally goes here. And it holds the, they call it the tool post holder that holds the, the cutting bits for the lathe is moved up to here with my homemade bracket. And I, uh, I'm still messing around with this. I'm going to do some, I'm going to make a modification to that yet. This is crazy guys. It was like 300 grand worth of stuff that cost me 25 bucks. <laughs> I mean, I'm even including the price of the hardware, 25 bucks. If that crazy. So here I'm just kind of getting a feel for it, screwing around, and I'm, you know, not the best, but man, I'm flying with this work. Check this out. But uh, do you see what I'm doing? Do you see it? Uh, I, I don't know what to say about myself. All right, so now I'm using it as a drill press, and since it's a drill press vise, you can go all the way through the part as long as you have it lined up with the drill bit, and... Uh, the safety salaries would probably be like, those strings are too long and blah, blah, blah. They'll cut your face off. Well, I got extra faces laying around. We're good. But it works really good. I've tried to hone the art of drilling a straight hole because I've never had a drill press. And I still suck at it. Can't drill a straight hole to save my life. Neither can you. Don't act like you can. But here we go. Drill press. You know, I was literally looking at drill presses the other day like, God, there's, how the hell am I going to fit one of these in my shop? And... But so I did put I put a carbide burr on after, but that's the hole I drilled. Finished it off. Looks looks perfect. Hot damn! This is crazy that I have the ability to do this stuff. So now here I'm just screwing around with an end mill, just trying to get a feel for it. And I learned right away there's a few things that you're gonna want to do. Yeah, high speed is your friend. And this is just aluminum too, so it's easier. But just screwing around, kind of trying to figure it out. And uh, I don't know. There we go. All right, well, I'm starting to get the hang of it. So a few things, and again, this is all, I joke about being a high-level machinist, but this is, I'm all self-taught. This is learning on the fly. But before I was cutting, I would run, I'd run my piece, uh, I call it east and west, but maybe I'm wrong on that, but I'd run it side to side like this, and I would cut both ways. Now, I don't think, that's the way to do it because the the bit cuts this way. It's it's spinning clockwise. So the cutting edge is coming around like this. So I have found that you want to drag the piece, just like when you're porting using a, a burr, you want to drag the piece against the cut. If you go with it, it still works, but it wants to, it doesn't leave a, uh, as nice of a finish and it wants to walk itself. Like, okay, see, right? If I can, maybe have to shut this off. Okay, yeah, you see that looks like teeth kind of? That's from running the piece, yeah, this way. You want to run it this way. You want to drag it against the, the cutting edge, I guess. And I'm probably not explaining this very well. Uh, also, up and down or vertical, now it would be, I don't even know what you call that. It ain't even north and south. I got basically... I got another another D. This used to be 2D, now it's 3D. And shit, I might even get to 4D pretty soon. Also, keeping this thing completely secure is your is your best friend along with speed. So this lathe actually hauls the mail. It is a very fast lathe. I don't even have it I don't even have it close to turned up all the way, but once I sped that up, that helped a lot. Uh, using cutting oil with aluminum hasn't really been an issue. I can go pretty fast with it. I can take bigger bites than I thought, but having this thing secure so it's not moving around. See, I have these bolts down here. These guys, that is to lock against 
the bottom so I can level this thing out. And I'm going to end up putting a brace or a pretty good bracket, but I want it to be adjustable. That's the whole thing. Otherwise, I might get it completely... Uh, well, I can't do that because I can't weld to this. I'm going to figure something out, but right now it is really secure. It just adding these bolts down here really helped. I got one on each side and then I can back it out so I can get it where I want and then lock it down because if you start to push against this thing with any force and you don't see, I got that thing. This thing is damn secure. Like I can't even move it. Uh, at first it was kind of, it wanted to start juddering really bad and I, you can't really have that. But once you get it secure, if you got that thing locked down, it's this works really good. Uh, drilling holes, the same thing. You can use it like a drill press. You can move your piece. And I don't have the teeth in this. So this drill press vise has the teeth on the jaws. I could flip them around, but I didn't really like that because it marks up the piece, even though this is just a scrap piece. Um, it, I don't know. I'll probably put the teeth back in it. Uh, also, the teeth... You know what I mean? They are not, I wish they were, I could mill them down actually. See how they, uh, they stick up past this, this edge. What I should do, I should mill this so it's flat. If the teeth are in it, that they're flat. Cause I like to be against this back. I like to be pressed against it. That helps a lot. Cause you don't want the piece moving, but, uh, I'm giving advice here on something I don't really know about. This is just what I've learned in the, you know, 45 minutes I've been doing this, but yeah, I'll, uh, I'm going to crank the speed up a little bit. Even I got a different end mill on here and I'll put you in the tripod here and we'll do some high level. I thought I was recording and I wasn't, but anyway, here I'm going to, so I've learned that it's better to, to get where you want to be, sink it in and then make your cut. Okay, so that's as deep as I want to be. I can use a dial indicator down here to figure out where I want to be for depth. And then you just drag it all the way down the cut. And this is where keeping this thing super tight is helping because it wants to start moving around, but it, it can't. I'm trying to keep out of the way of the camera here. And then another thing I've, I've kind of picked up is that if you want to go back down and make another cut, you're better off backing off and then going that way because otherwise you're blocking down the cut you just made and that kind of kind of screws everything up. So you'd back it off, come all the way back down. Okay. Go more distance, whatever distance you want to go. And again, use the dial indicator, go back to the cut that you want, or the depth, right there. And cut all the way up. I mean, I can make anything I want with this damn thing. Halloween's coming up, I could probably make like a uh, a bang stick for a, a ghost or something like that. You know what I mean? The ghosts are out on Halloween. Try and make a boom stick for one. I don't know. I'm just saying. Have a sense of humor, guys. All right, one more. Oh, my hand's probably going in front of the camera every time. I could do. I thought about just putting it on an impact. <laughs> I mean, a guy really could, or a drill, so you don't have that slamming against it, but. Okay, so we got a 500i piston that this one the intake skirt was so short that uh, I didn't feel comfortable using it like that so I made a, a hybrid out of this but I cut windows in some of the, the 500i pistons and I did this side your left side by hand with my uh, steadiest hands in the west Midwest and we're gonna mill in the ones on the right side let's see what happens this is a ball mill so I don't need the auto feed. We'll speed this up so you don't have to watch my awesome machining, but this turns out pretty damn good. This is this is a whole new window of opportunities. Oh shit, that is... I didn't even take my time, not even a little bit. Well, I mean, it's hard to beat a mill, 
I mean, so I can't feel too bad about myself, but I still came out on top. Uh, Mills are, you know, they are what they are. They don't got the steady hands uh, your boy does. So good effort by the mill, but mine's better. Mine would be the one on the right, did the one with the mill on the left. And, you know, a mill can only be so accurate. I wouldn't feel bad if I was the mill. I really wouldn't. But no, it's, uh, I'm, I'm only serious. Uh, I, I got all kinds of ideas already. I might even machine windows in the Wiseco piston just because I can mill them in. But damn, how hard it is, how hard is it to, uh, to mill forged aluminum? I've heard it shatters. I might have to look into that, but that would be crazy, huh? The already light piston, even lighter. Whew. Well, that was a horrible whistle. I'm out of here with that. That was, that was pathetic. Stay rowdy, my friends. I got to learn how to whistle. <laughs> This is the raddest thing I've ever seen in my life.